Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler. Welcome to this 10th and final video on Stockfish's opening repertoire. Um, there is a lot in this file, so I'm not going to cover all of it. Do take a look at the uh, at the PGN, which I'll make available. Um, but uh, we're going to have a look at the uh, the most fun things and the most interesting things here. I mean, first of all, one mainline opening that we haven't really covered is the Dutch, in actual fact. Um, what does Stockfish want to do about that? Well, Bishop G5 is something that it looks at uh, for quite a bit at um, lower depths. But after a while, it goes for knight f3. And its main line, of course, is a stone wall. Uh, whenever you give uh, yeah, the Dutch to an engine, they always end up setting up the stone wall. And uh, this is basically what, uh, what Stockfish is going for here. Um, knight d7, so maybe a little bit of an unusual move played that early. But the idea is just to take back with the, uh, the c pawn. It's very much like um, a Queen's Indian. You're going to try eventually and play b6, bishop b7, rook, rook c8. But you've got to be a little bit careful because there's a few moves like queen c6, for example. Now, rook c1, knight b6. Doesn't look so fantastic, but, um, well, if Stockfish uh, can hold it together, then why not? And, uh, well, by the time you get to this stage, it's looking a lot more like a, um, a pretty normal um, stone wall there. In principle, slightly better for white, but, um, yeah, I mean, uh, the engines hold a lot of these positions as black. So um, that's basically the, uh, the, um, uh, the Dutch. Um, if we look at the Leningrad Dutch, that's with G6. That's always more interesting. Actually, um, um, yeah, white uh, just plays uh, a slightly unusual idea here. Rookie one knight a6 and then just a3 just looking for b4 bishop b2 and uh, um, knight e4 was played in a game uh, between Studer and uh, Kamsky in Beale 2021 uh, Stockfish actually just wants to give up a pawn with uh, e5 I mean we've always seen how uh, how much engines love to uh, to sacrifice pawns for the initiative and after takes takes knight e5 takes takes knight c5 b4 knight e4 f4 knight b3 well, you can see that black's going to have uh, some sort of compensation here. Um, actually, you're probably just going to end up winning this pawn back on e5. So um, 0.91 for, for white, according to Stockfish. But uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure about that, really. Um, maybe a little bit over-optimistic. But uh, interesting to see that, um, you know, just uh, the engines in general, they do like this classical G3 system against the uh, the Dutch. Um, I mean, one other thing that, um, that Stockfish liked actually was knight f3, and especially against e6, then uh, bishop f4, a sort of a London system, followed by e3 and c4. But in the end, plumping for, uh, for g3. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, well, I spent a little bit of time having a look at stuff like the Trompowski and the London system. Let's have a look at that. Um, the Trompowski, yeah, um, uh, the engines don't really seem to think very much of it. Um, just actually playing d5 and c5 and uh, not worried at all about bishop f6. We'll just take back with a g-pawn. I've had a number of games with this line myself and, uh, yeah, always been very, very comfortable. So um, nothing too uh, too scary there. Um, Bishop f4 is quite uh, interesting, a sort of a London system accelerated. And here actually uh, Stockfish just wants to play g6 and uh, d6, knight bd7. And after knight f3 even play this move knight h5, bishop g5 and c5. And uh, But basically choose a, a retty reversed kind of, uh, kind of opening. It assesses it as 0.08, so a slight advantage for white, nothing too, uh, too huge. Um, if you play the uh, the London system with a more traditional move order, so knight f6, knight f3, d5, bishop f4, which is also what Komodo wanted, then Stockfish very keen to go for the very sharpest line here. Uh, queen takes b2. Now, um, uh, I mean, I've actually we've actually looked at this uh, quite a bit on both the Game Changer and the uh, Silicon Road channel, and I'll put some uh, I'll put some uh, some videos uh, in the uh, PGNs there, which you can maybe have a look at. It's very very interesting. Um, I think Rook B1 was what uh, both um, uh, was what Alpha Zero was playing. But um, uh, c4 was, is uh, Stockfish's idea, which I've also seen as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, white has some compensation here for the um, uh, for the um, uh, for the pawns. But uh, yeah, not um, well. It's very tactical, as you can see. Uh, we're taking the uh, the bishop, the queen's on priest, but also the uh, the queen on d1 is on priest. Some crazy tactics there. 
but uh, eventually you'd come out to this position and uh, yeah I mean White's obviously got good compensation for the pawn but uh, nothing more than that so that's quite a, an interesting uh, London system line there um, what else uh, do we have um, well let's have a look here um, well maybe an interesting uh, couple of ideas here c4 how about the Albin count gambit with uh, with e5 um, actually um, uh, yeah the engines very very keen on this move a3 um, simply threatening to play um, b4 to b5 and drive away this knight or maybe bishop b2 to attack the pawn on d4 and uh, well the best line uh, this is a line actually that Morozevich played against uh, Boris Gelfand a while back. Bishop d4, e3, bishop b6, and now queen c1. Queen c2 was uh, Gelfand against um, uh, against Morozevich. This is um, uh, Stockfish's uh, preferred choice. And why it's just a little bit better here. 1.22 says uh, Stockfish, which is, again, quite a lot. Um, I suppose the big problem is that um, this queen side is under quite a bit of pressure. I've got moves like knight c4, also bishop f3, and the pawns on a5 and b7 are weak. Not to mention the pawn on, uh, on c7, which can be attacked along the c-file. So, yeah, you know, in, in principle, whites are doing better. 1.22 feels like a lot, but, um, well, you never know. Maybe it... Uh, maybe it uh, maybe it is actually that uh, that good who knows um if we have a look at some uh, some other lines um how about um 1b3 first of all how does uh, stockfish deal with that well e5 bishop b2 knight c6 again just like komodo dragon really wants to uh, to grab the center i mean komodo dragon played this move queen h4 check back to e7 and uh, a very sharp line with a piece sack actually that's in stockfish's pv for uh, quite a long time but then eventually it goes for another line um e takes f4 and knight e7 queen f6 rook f8 fe and then this move queen d7 just getting the queen out this way swapping off the queens and then uh, well there's no problems well if you avoid it just castles castles and uh, and black's doing pretty well here um so yeah i mean uh, this is also following a, a correspondence game in 2020 quite a high level one 24 30 players so uh, and um well i mean actually stockfish even gives minus 0 0.08 to uh, to black so it even thinks that b3 is a little bit better for uh, for black but uh, yeah i mean not too um, not too horrific knight c3 is an interesting one it's been quite popular there's been uh, dvds about it richard rapport has uh, played it quite a bit um actually um stockfish just wants to play d5 and take the transposition back into the jabava london system really considers bishop f4 to be uh, white's best move there on the third move and then um, this line actually a line that uh, appears in um, a recent book by simon williams on the jabava london system castles a3 bishop e7 g5 uh, Simon only mentions knight h5 in this position. Knight fd7 is what uh, Stockfish wants. And then he just wants to sack a pawn in this way, which is pretty uh, pretty nice, really. Um, yeah, I mean, just a, just a pretty interesting, unclear position, really. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, according to Stockfish, Jababa London system looks uh, pretty interesting. Um, let's have a look. What else do we have? Um, B4 I was asked about what do you do about that well I mean all of the engines just want to do this they grab the B pawn and then grab some uh, um, just grab central space and uh, get some extra tempi whilst White's um, uh, getting himself sorted out and um, yeah this is just very nice for, uh, for, for black you know what can you say you can't complain about this at all um, yeah Actually, it's even given as minus 0 0.45 for uh, for black. So Stockfish really thinks that uh, that b4 is uh, is a very bad move there. So uh, pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. You know, it's um, uh, yeah. I mean, just uh, nothing too much for white really. F4. It's a a Dutch. So not too surprising that actually uh, the engines just want to play the same system they play as white, but with reverse colours and. Uh, yeah, this just uh, ends up being quite pleasant for black. Um, white can do, uh, yeah, various stuff, but uh, Stockfish just considers it to be minus 0 0.52, so just a little bit better for, um, uh, for you know, for uh, for black really. Basically, you know, black's playing the uh, uh, black's playing white in uh, in this type of position. 
Um, what else do we have here? Well, we have some stuff with uh, with one e four. Um, I was uh, uh, quite interested to see what um, Stockfish made of the um, of the Mora Gambit as well. Um, actually, you know, again, what what Stockfish came up with was uh, just something very very calm and quiet, really. Knight f6, Queen e2. Didn't play Bishop e7. It played this move, Knight h5, to chase away the Bishop from f4. And after Bishop e3, Bishop e7, Rook d1, Bishop d7 takes g6. Actually, just wanted to give up, give the pawn back. And just claim that um, the black had a slight advantage with uh, well this bishop is better than this one and uh, some control of the dark squares you know some weak uh, um, uh, well the, the white king is uh, a little bit short of squares at the moment minus 0 0.33 but you know hardly a decisive advantage it really does seem that you can just give away this um, uh, this deep on uh, in, in the opening and uh, you know just not have any problems at all um, another venerable gambit of course is the king's gambit e4 e5 f4 what does stockfish want to do about this well um it didn't go for d6 in the end the fisher line it just went for this other line that uh, the engines have been interested about all the way and uh bishop b5 check c6 and uh well yeah uh, just considers that uh, that it's um, a little bit better here um gives itself minus 0 0.63 yeah again uh, perfectly possible queen e2 bishop b6 takes takes Bishop a4, queen back, and queen f6, and bishop d6, and uh, well, we'll just claim that we're uh, that we're better there. Just um, yeah, a number of simple options against the uh, the king's gambit. Nothing too amazing there. Um, and do we have anything finally? Well, I even had a look at uh, moves like h3, for example. Funny thing is, is that uh, after this, uh, it says e5 and then e4. And then knight f6, knight f3, and we just end up playing uh, a Petrov reversed, which, in all fairness, is not the uh, the most uh, thrilling thing in the world. But um, uh, eighth, after a3, unfortunately, uh, my um, my uh, laptop uh, had a bit of a senior moment and uh, um, uh, crashed before it, it finished it. But it was looking at c5 in this position, and uh, we were getting a 0.0, .0 valuation. So uh, yeah, also quite uh, quite interesting there. So there we are, just um, a little bit of, um, of a mix of uh, variations. Uh, I said, do dive into the uh, PGN that I provide because there's uh, you know lots more uh, in there. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this um, this uh, summary of uh, Stockfish's opening repertoire. Uh, it's the latest version of Stockfish available at the current moment, 13th of uh, July 2022. So um, yeah, you can basically expect that uh, the version that you download now will be uh, will give basically these results. And um, yeah, will be interesting maybe in a year's time or something to redo this and to see what changes there are. You know, that's uh, because, um, yeah, I mean, uh, different versions, different weights, new patches. It does have an effect on what engines thinks are the best. But uh, yeah, not, um, you know, totally fundamentally. I think that's pretty fixed. I think Berlin's going to remain for a long time and probably the Ragazin is going to be the, you know, the general opening of choice for all these engines. But, uh, but certainly in some of the sub variations, you know, maybe Nidorf or something like that, then I would expect that things could definitely change. So there we are. If you like this series of videos, why not give some likes, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new book, The Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, which uh, does uh, yeah, enormous amounts of uh, analysis of engine games, plenty of tips for how to work with engines and lots of stuff on openings as well. And otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you watch the whole series, huge thank you. And uh, well, see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.